language lovers welcome to my channel first of all I'd like to wish all Mozambicans a happy Independence Day I love you very much Estamos juntos. today's topic was inspired by the changes occurred in the 2002 Enterprise Act the British one that is in many Western countries or at least in countries where democracy and education are an establishment uh, you can witness a lot of hostility against uh, foreign direct investment mainly because the foreign direct investment are perceived as a threat to their sovereignty the hostility usually comes from citizens the general public and it manifests itself through demonstrations that can even escalate to great violence this kind of animosity usually happens when national treasures are at threat, let's say. By national treasures, I mean those companies who became uh, almost like symbols of national identity. Um, in the UK, for example, you have the NHS, and then in the Mozambique you have EDM, which is also a national treasure. Do you have a national treasure in your country? Comment down below what companies are national treasures to your country. In terms of the perceived threats, what are those? Why are people usually scared of massive foreign direct investment? Number one is because investors usually bring their own stuff. At least the higher and medium qualified stuff is usually imported. The national market employment is jeopardized, right? and that prostrates expectations because if they are seeing that there are a lot of um, capital being invested in the country um, and people are being displaced from their usual environment from what they know right from their homes they're displaced and usually it involves them having to be uh, placed in remote areas where they don't have uh, easy access to schools, to hospitals and other uh, infrastructures. So it is difficult for um, the local community to adjust, especially when uh, due indemnity is not paid, which is usually the case. Number two, we have the fact that foreigners usually have it easier to own land for example in Africa and the other way around is not the truth meaning that it's not easy for an African to own land in China for example that constraint is not only due to financial reasons but also due to their own excessive bureaucracy which is um, in a way connected to protectionism and then we have discrimination in itself so it's not really easy for foreigners or at least foreigners coming from developing countries to establish businesses in those countries and then we have the fact that the multinationals are usually very powerful I mean they are companies that are established for decades they have their own way of doing business uh, they have their own modus operandi so it is difficult for them to to relinquish their rules in order to adjust to the local market so it's more about a fist fight who is stronger and usually the host country has to surrender right for obvious reasons yeah and then we have the problem of pollution those manufacturers those companies I think about shell for example the scandals around shell that pollutes African um, countries and um, and the accountability is usually uh, not proportionate to the damage that they cause to those uh, populations so that's that and then we have the unsafety as uh, in general Think about India and in all those countries where uh, it's easier for foreign investors to get away with uh, murder uh, and they do get away with murder. So having all these fears that I've just mentioned in mind, is foreign direct investment really safe? Is it advantageous? 
uh, is it something that the host country should look for? Many countries function only through foreign direct investment or mainly and they don't necessarily have to be developing countries. Think about New Zealand uh, where the banking sector is dominated by foreign companies. The UK itself is a country that is known to be very open to investment, to foreign direct investment. Uh, but that being said, is it open to just any investor? Yes and no. At the moment, no. Uh, and that's where I want to talk about the changes that occurred in the Act. The UK is open for investment, but it is not open for exploitation. Those are the words of the Business Secretary, Mr. Sharma, and he preferred those words um, very recently uh, in the context of uh, the changes to the Act. So following European Commission and countries around Europe, the UK understands that the recession caused by COVID-19 and Brexit to a certain extent has weakened the economy to the point that uh, many businesses are susceptible to take over. And given that China is a systemic rival, those are the words of the press, systemic rival and strategic competitor, uh, many times aggressive competitor, there are worries that um, China will take advantage of all this situation and will uh, be able to take over companies at a very lower price. China is always at the doorstep. It is a country that everyone is worried about. Um, it has invested more than 20 billion dollars in the past five years in the UK alone and uh, many other billions uh, around Europe. So China is very strong and it has the mission to conquer the world indeed. So it's not just Africa that is worried about, um, well, Africa is not really worried that I know, but it should. So the changes to the act allow the government to intervene whenever a foreign power or a foreign company is willing to take over businesses that operate in the areas of national security, media plurality, financial stability, and now especially uh, public health emergency. And actually this was the last sector that uh, spurred the changes. Fears that for example China could take over uh, pharmaceutical companies or companies that are manufacturing uh, uh, personal protective equipment for COVID-19. It's a good opportunity. Whenever there's an event or tragedy, um, there's always a good opportunity, right? So China is, with its eyes, very open. And um, Europe and the West is trying to avoid being taken over altogether by China. Now, this is obviously a protectionist measure, right? So there's no uh, denial and there's no doubt in that it's very clear now let's go back to developing countries I have to say that foreign direct investment will only be detrimental to those economies if the governments of those countries allow it okay in Mozambique I know that the laws in place are very sophisticated many of them are imported from abroad from developed countries so uh, there's no lack of uh, law there's no lack of regulation the problem is the implementation and the enforcement of those laws right uh, it's not taken seriously enough obviously due to corruption those companies are as I said able to get away with murder when they violate essential 
rules uh, they end up being prosecuted in Europe they end up being prosecuted in the UK uh, this is something that I think that should change if developing countries want to be prosperous. Uh, the enforcement of law is a great stake that contributes to the stability of a country as a whole. Without law enforcement, and if you see a developed country is only developed because there is respect for the law emerging nations most of them have all the resources that they need to become developed the only reason why they don't develop is because they don't respect the law they have laws in place that are not respected they're not enforced because of corruption so um, that's really the big difference you respect the laws you have a developed country you don't respect the laws you have a mess so it's a very serious decision to take I would really like to see for example more companies being sued by local governments by host countries I'm talking about foreign direct investment companies being sued by uh, local host countries that doesn't happen that often does it it would be really refreshing and it is actually motivating and it is good to have scrutiny from the government especially in those hazardous sectors where uh, damage is inevitable we know that uh, but then the extent of that damage would be less impactful if they could only fear the law okay if they could fear the local government it is very important and that is also linked to independence right today is the 45th anniversary of Mozambique's independence they're still struggling with safety they're still struggling with foreign invasion there's no stability in Mozambique and that's not independence when you're not able to protect your borders, for example. There's so many things that need to be considered or reconsidered, restructured. The issues around Cabo Delgado need to stop. Cabo Delgado needs a resolution immediately. Without peace throughout the country, there's no real independence. Thank you very much for watching. Have a lovely week. Ciao.